Chances are you've never seen him before. You may not even recognize his name, but if you own a television set, you have seen that name over and over again on Cheers, on Frasier, on Third Rock from the Sun, and Friends, and Caroline in the City, and Wings, half a dozen more of your favorite sitcoms. Arguably television's leading creator of television pilots, Jim Burroughs directs them, he launches them, and then he sits back and garners not just kudos, but also tens of millions of dollars for launching some of the most successful television shows in history. You okay? I'm good. This is a good And he's launched yet another one. It's called Pearl, and it stars Rhea Perlman. Now, you know what? Reese, um, have a soda, listen to you guys. Okay, have a soda, do this, do this. Now do the introductions, because it yeah. seems odd. Yeah. Okay? And it's on CBS, but that's not why we're showing it to you. Pilots are often considered off-limits to anyone but cast and crew. This is the only one directed by Burroughs this season that would allow our cameras in. You know what? Can you guys, can you guys, when they sit down there, can you guys kind of... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been 41 years now since Jim Burroughs made his show business debut. As an extra, in Edward R. Murrow's person-to-person -person -person visit to Jim's famous father, Abe Burroughs. My heart told me I needed a wife. It told me that my life was in a rut. And now I think I'll dip. Everything might have been if my heart had kept its big mouth shut. Although Abe Burroughs did show up from time to time on television, like his son, his name was better known than his face. Featured on Playbill after Playbill as one of the creators of Broadway shows like Guys and Dolls and How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. Jimmy, tell me, are you uh, heading into show business like your dad? Well, I've thought about it, but I haven't made up my decision yet. Well, Hollywood made it up for him. For this past year, Jim Burroughs was honored for lifetime achievement by the American Comedy Awards. In this crowd, they call him the doctor, as in show doctor. Same thing they called his dad 50 years ago on Broadway. It seemed that everyone in the business showed up that night to honor Jim Burroughs, starting with the tape tribute by the cast of Friends. We just all just trust you so much. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you laugh at something, we know it's funny. And if you don't laugh at something, we know it's not funny. We're really lucky to have Jimmy. I mean, personally, I, I didn't know how to do this at all when I, when I started. And Jimmy was really there to teach me how to tell dry jokes, which I had never done before. <laughs> You're the biggest joy in my professional life. Uh, there are so many people here tonight who feel the same way. Uh, people who've flown from all over the world to be here, and Kirsty came. Um, <laughs> the only time I ever found my home was in the midst of a rehearsal process with this man. And in the arms of James Burroughs and his comedic gift, I suddenly felt that I was important, extraordinary, and talented enough to deserve the genius of this man's affection. I love him madly, Jimmy Burroughs. As we watched together, I was astonished to see him crying. You cry. I cry when I get happy. I cry, I cry when I get moved. I and just, that moves you. To see these people get up and, 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 and talk about... You. Me. And what you've given them. I, I don't realize what I've given them. What he's given them, what he's given all of us, are funny, affecting television shows. I know. 39 pilots out of 56 you know he's directed have wound up in prime time. I did the pilot for Wings, I did the pilot for Frasier and did, did some ensuing episodes. I did the pilot for Friends, I did uh, Caroline in the City, Third Rock. Where did all this begin? 20 years ago, Jim was directing summer stock and dinner theaters when he saw something that changed his career path. Who can turn the world down with her smile? I was watching television, there was the Mary Tyler Moore show on the air. And I looked and I said, they're doing a 20 minute play every week and I'm doing a two hour play every week. I, I think I can do that. So, so he wrote her a letter and that led to his yeah, first job directing a television comedy. Jim had learned the trade by watching his father direct on the Broadway stage. 
He is his father in many ways. He sits back, he watches, he listens. Listening more than anything, taking it in. And Jim's said, only sister, Lori, says that growing up in Abe's shadow, however, took its toll on Jim. And she ought to know she was the other extra featured in her father's appearance on Person to Person. How are you, Lori? Fine. What were you doing when we came in just now? I was helping Frank with the flowers. I rehearsed that line 5,200 times. <laughs> it was set up. Was that your sole line? That was my sole line. I was in fifth grade. It was my sole line. I was petrified. Did he have a tough time growing up? My father said to him, look, if I were a plumber, you'd be a plumber. I'm a director. You'll be a director. Go off to Yale. And that was it. You've said that your father had a special way of looking at the world. You know, one day I said to Abe, how come you, you know, how come you think this way? How come when you see something, you think funny? He put his glasses on. He said, most people see the world this way. And he went, I see the world this way. Okay, let's read. Like father, like son. Jim sees words in a comedy script. And then he helps his actors turn those words into something very funny. They have got to move the bathroom closer to the studio. <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. Can I put that on tape? <laughs> they sent it to me to direct, and uh, I... Um, you what? I tried to put my touch on it. In terms of working with Jimmy, um, if, he, if he trusts you, if he, gets, he can't really direct you, you know. <laughs> he doesn't really know what to say to you, but he knows how to make a gesture that you understand. He, he develops a shorthand so quickly, that it's, it's, so, it's so brilliant that uh, working with Jimmy is a joy, of course. He's the fastest thing in the world. Like working fast is a trademark. Karen. No, no. He's got That's a two son. here. Stay he in the single arena. Okay. It's a much better. He's, he's got two here. The half hour situation comedy usually takes about three hours to shoot. Jim Burroughs once finished taping a show of his in just over an hour. <laughs> you laugh hard in rehearsal. Yes. And then you laugh hard when, you're, when the show's being taped. Yes. And it's all genuine? Some of it is just to let the actors know that there'll probably be a laugh here so that they can get used to that. Wherever he laughs, the audience, yeah. a week later, laughs on mass. <laughs> actors Ted Detson and Mary Steenburgen worked with Jim Burroughs on a sitcom called well, Ink. When you got it right, you'd hear Jimmy's laugh. Yes. And I think that that's the carrot that all the actors probably they want. want is they want Jimmy's hear, laugh. <laughs> hear Jimmy's laugh. What makes something funny? Surprise. I think surprise is the most important element. From this day forward, I will hold my head up high because I am Rebecca Howe. I am the manager of Cheers. That's, that's why we always keep the flap on. Cheers may be his funniest creation. The show set in a bar room that dealt in dialogue delivered as one critic put it, like verbal karate. I hate you with the white-hot intensity of a thousand suns. Cheers began as the story of a Lothario bar owner named Sam and his tortured love affair with an uptight waitress named Diane. You always think you gotta get the last one in. You go, come on. Please, come on, let go, let go, come on, all right? You first. All right, all right, all right. Well, on the count of three. One, two, three, now. America thought that was a healthy relationship. That's the great thing about Cheers. We got, we got slews of letters about people wanting to have a relationship like Sam and Diane. We were baffled by that because it was an incredibly dysfunctional relationship. Jim's own relationship with his dad proved crucial in the early stages of Cheers. Before Abe's death in 1985, Jim's father, ever the show doctor, had one final fix for his son's creation. After seeing the first show, he said, the bartender needs more dirt under his nails, which was his way of saying that Teddy needed to, to be a little rougher. And he was right. 11 years, 275 episodes of which you directed how many about 240 yeah. cheers has taken in half a billion dollars in syndicated revenue i understand true <laughs> you're not going to answer i won't answer i don't you, wanna... you told me before you'll answer any question oh, okay i uh I, I i it's hard i don't like to say 
I don't like to talk about that. You don't like to talk about no. it because it's so much. Well. And it, it makes you uncomfortable. It does. As one of the show's three co-creators, he earns a fortune on syndication reruns. But it wasn't always that way. When Cheers first went on the air, it was a flop. Nobody was watching, and we couldn't understand until we figured it out. There's no reason to watch this show. Why should anybody watch this show? There's nobody in it you ever heard of. It's on a network that nobody was watching. You were number 71 out of 75 shows. Yeah. yeah. The network brass at NBC stuck with it, and the bar stayed open for 11 seasons. But there have been real failures, as what happened to the only feature film he ever directed called Partners. The story of two undercover cops posing as lovers to find the killer of a gay man. The film was a bomb. Why? Because back then, I, I was not as good as I am now. I just, I didn't have the balls. I didn't have the confidence. He never directed a film again, choosing instead to concentrate his time exclusively on directing television pilots. Now the only thing he must come to terms with is the fact that he is even more successful in his field than his father ever was in his. A lot of people looking in haven't a clue as to who Abe Burroughs was. Who he, was he? He was Jim Burroughs' father. To my father who taught me images I use every day, who listened to rhythms and paced while he worked, and told me you can do what you want with your life, but first try to theater for a few decades. <laughs> Thanks for the chance to carry on. Thanks for the setup, Dad. I hope somewhere you're laughing at my punchline.